Spanish oh, Venom is out of here. You get out of here. You go back to Mexico. What the f were they doing? The Ruthless Aggression era was truly an iconic time for wrestling, and part of what made it so special was just how wild it could be at times, for better or for worse. But in that era that lasted around 6 years, for some reason in 2004, Thursday nights on UPN at 8pm- What no, but Oh my god, this intro! Yo, UPN was fire, bro. Would air and it would be batshit insane every single week. What was once a show known for showcasing amazing in ring work ended up being a show that have storylines consisting of stabbing, shootings, border patrol, heart attacks, cement burials, and so much more. Y'all remember, remember when they buried Paul Heyman? It was Undertaker. No! <laughs> they buried my. No, Undertaker! <laughs> I'm like, what the f wrong his voice? Back down in 2004. Girl, was Boy. Insane. When 04 began from a distance, SmackDown as a whole seemed pretty normal. You had Brock Lesnar as the champion, John Cena was the up and coming star, Eddie was about to break out, oh, yeah. and Paul Heyman was the general manager. It seemed like just another wrestling show. And then you would actually watch the show, and next thing you know, all you see is the Basham brothers tied up backstage in oh some dungeon God. just getting. I forgot the Basham brothers were some super freaks. Whipped and tortured by a woman named Shaniqua. And I didn't know, I didn't know what this was. This? But despite this but, and this and- Come on bro, that, that's crazy. Yo, Jamie Noble and Nidia, bro. Other interesting stuff, SmackDown kept it relatively Nidia normal until on. WrestleMania. But once WrestleMania season was over, that was when all hell broke loose on SmackDown and it all began in March when Paul Heyman quit as the general manager of the show. A new general manager was announced and that turned out to be a suit wearing cracked out Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle <laughs> becoming the SmackDown GM was the moment that everything just went mental. The same night Kurt Angle became the GM was also the night that this tubby, uncoordinated, just meme of a person, after spending years in the lower mid card, magically became the biggest demon on SmackDown. Yo, and the 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 decision to make this um from the ABA, I think it was the uh, the APA, to a main heel. Elite move, elite move. This I did not know he could be this unlikable, but he's a hell of a heel on guard. And also, the clothesline from hell is a top tier finisher. I don't know how that made the clothesline look like they turned like that, but the clothesline from hell one of them ones. Bradshaw became John Bradshaw, Layfield, JBL, and the rest was history. Kurt Angle became the Maniac GM, JBL was the 2016 Donald Trump all the way back in 2004, and every week something was just going down on UPN. Yeah, One week, Kurt Angle made a match between Eddie Guerrero and The Big Show, and if Big Show lost, he would have to retire. So what happens? Well, Big Show ends up losing and he goes on a rampage. Big Show basically becomes King Kong real quick and while walking around backstage, the gorilla, just like the movie, found his blonde girl. He thinks Tori Wilson was- This is when I choke slam Kurt. I thought that killed my bro. Laughing at him for losing his match I thought and he having killed to quit. My Tire. So this idiot starts breaking windows, crying, spitting everywhere, crying again. The gorilla had officially lost his mind. That missed his window. <laughs> Big ass leg. Crying, spitting everywhere, crying again. The gorilla had a <laughs> big ass leg. Officially lost his mind. And it was all Dr. Oh, Evil's too. fault. I mean, Kurt Angle. So Big Show flips over a car and begins chasing Tori Wilson backstage. And we just cut to another match like it's fine. It's all good. This, this happens every week. And after the match, the show ends with a Big Show holding Tori Wilson on top of a balcony, threatening to throw her down and basically kill her on television. So out comes GM Kurt Angle to save the day, right? Okay, it's wrestling, everything will be fine, whatever, maybe they'll bra, it'll be alright. Like, Bro, the way this leg is about to look was crazy. It's nothing we haven't seen before. Nah, nah, not on 04 SmackDown. Big Show grabs Kurt Angle and choke slams him off the balcony, and you just hear this nasty thud. And ladies and gentlemen, it is presented, it is assumed that Kurt Angle is dead. <laughs> Tori ah! is screaming her lungs out. I go like that thud, got it. <laughs> Bro, oh my god. Show's faces on your screen looking like a Neanderthal, just absolutely disgusting. And then all you see is Kurt Angle. Nah, nah, I gotta add it to the going slow, bro.
I swear to God, I thought he was dead. I thought, I thought he killed Kurt Angle. I'm like, no, Kurt. Ah. Mama, he killed Kurt Angle. Ah. That nigga, look at this man. Oh my God. Hey, bro. Hey, chat. Wish you don't answer her phone for 30 minutes. <laughs> hey, what's he gonna miss it for an hour? <laughs> oh my god! Look at my nigga, bro. Let me go with this shit, bro. Oh, that nigga funny, bro. Look at my nigga legs, bro. Wait, copy. People just wait. Play the video, man. Let me. We're gonna let that rock, and then I'm gonna put this on this thing while while it download. Bro, that nigga looks insane. Then I think they had a little bit of blood come out, bro. Wasted, like legit wasted on the ground with blood coming out of the back of his head. And SmackDown just ends with you assuming that Big Show has killed Kurt Angle. <laughs> this nigga. Yep, totally normal because now SmackDown is apparently Law and Order SVU. And then next week the show takes place as usual. There's no police anywhere. There's no investigation, no funeral, no memorial. There is nothing. They just say Kurt Angle had an accident. But hey, here's JBL beating up a Mexican. Say, man, don't start that shit, man. Don't start that shit, bro. If y'all can see me, type ones in the chat, bro. Type ones in the chat, man. Fun fact, Kurt Angle had a stunt double. His brother, Eric Angle, took the fall due to Kurt's IRL injuries, LOL. Yo, Phantasm. I think my nigga Phantasm got all the wrestling facts. Shout out to my dog, man. Um, Yo, I had to download a new version of OBS today because my last one literally wouldn't open. We went a nice three months without my fucking OBS freezing. Don't start that freezing shit again. Well, I say two months. <clears throat> Wait, so fantastic. So when did he take the when he took the fall? All right. So let, let's go back. Totally normal because now SmackDown is apparently Law and Order SVU. And the next week, the show takes place as usual. Head, There's no police Maybe anywhere. There's no investigation, no funeral, no memorial. There is nothing. They just say Kurt Angle had an accident. Isn't Eric his twin? Nigga, Kurt Angle got a brother? Them niggas look alike, too. Look at this nigga. What the fuck? <clears throat> Uh, so at the balcony, you notice Kurt is not facing the camera. It was Eric. That's what he just laid down. Ain't that a bitch? Let me go back. This nigga done yeah, fucked hey me up with this one. I'm not on old first SmackDown. That dumb got it. Ah! There is nothing. They just say Kurt Angle had an accident. But hey, here's JBL beating up a Mexican. What? During all of this, JBL found himself as oh, a yeah. number one. That's what I was saying before um, my shit froze. Listen, JBL was so good at playing this role. I would not be surprised if at some point in time, later on down the line, JBL is running as a Republican candidate somewhere. This nigga role, he played this role crazy. Contender for Eddie's title. And the Mad was, was out here trying real. to start a civil war with the Mexicans on SmackDown. He was out here putting out PSAs of how JBL was going to fix America after becoming WWE I'm champion. How illegals were ruining America. How they need to stop teaching Spanish in schools and so on. And remember how I said JBL was the number one contender? You're probably wondering, how did JBL become the number one contender? Well, before Kurt Angle got clapped, he raised a very important question to the SmackDown roster. He wanted to find out who was the greatest American on the SmackDown roster and whoever could prove that the greatest American would get the title shot. So in the ring was the big show before he went mental, John Cena, Booker T, Charlie Haas for some reason, Charlie and Haas. JBL. And when it was time for JBL to speak, he pointed everyone's direction to the video. Now John Cena was taking this thug role too damn serious. This nigga got his belt on JBL. And when it was time for JBL. Look how this nigga went to the goddamn United States Championship. What the fuck you doing? Yo, to speak, he pointed everyone's direction to the video board and he played a video of him at the US and Mexico border. <laughs> this mother 
was out here dressed like a border patrol army <laughs> ranger or something and he was talking about how the evil mexicans are ruining Why is he america how, this video? Taxes, how they're lazy and then proceeds That's to a say video. there's a whole herd of mexicans over there the government won't do anything about it i will he then proceeds to run up on a Mexican family and literally kicks them back to Mexico, talking so much shit. All you hear is the poor family screaming, running away, and he just stands there like he's Eric Cartman at the border doing this a great American <laughs> service. Let me tell you what, this shit is one of the most racist WWE skits of all time, but I cannot lie. This skit is one of the funniest pieces of wrestling content you will ever fucking find. But only because, like, what the fuck were y'all doing? You're pretty good at stopping Mexicans, son. And it ends with him just staring into the distance, just looking for more like, Mexicans bro. to kick out. I, I can't, I can't. The fact that this was aired is wild. It's hilarious, it's insane, it's shocking, and it, it wasn't even a big deal. It was just another week on SmackDown. We go back to the arena after JBL plays the video and yo, Kurt Angle is just standing there look looking like Kurt. this was the greatest thing he had ever seen. Just look at the look on his face. And ladies and gentlemen, oh, that's no. how JBL got a title shot. it's a Mexico flag in the goddamn back. Oh my God. 2004 Smackdown, baby. But fast forward to the end of April, Kurt Angle did eventually make his return to the show in his iconic <laughs> wheelchair Fuck back from the bed here. here he was. Poor guy was in the middle of the ring the crying, telling us how he'll chair? never be able to wrestle again and how that he can't even satisfy his wife anymore because of the Neanderthal. And as a result, Angle just became a sociopath. But let's get back to JBL because remember, he is the demon of crazy. SmackDown in 2004 and you thought him at the border was wild? Nah, 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 it gets even more wild. In May, an episode of SmackDown JBL opened with Michael Cole in the ring staring into our souls. Tell Word? I know they ain't have him in a Mexican border for real. I know they, nigga, they, 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 nigga, they better had that nigga somewhere in the damn dark. Telling us how over the weekend an unfortunate accident took place. He hey, then bro, shows us footage from a non-televised show that consists of Eddie Guerrero yeah, in his hometown celebrating hard. with his wife, daughters, and eventually his 77-year-old oh, mother on Mother's Day. And bro, I, I can't believe this happened. So they're showing us Eddie celebrating with his mom in the ring, and all you see is JB Held the Demon pulls up and clotheslines Eddie Guerrero. The <laughs> demon then proceeds to trash talk Eddie's mom to her face. <laughs> I think okay, it's that's right. fine. You know, we've seen stuff like this oh before. My God. Well, he keeps going and going until Eddie Guerrero's mom has a heart attack in the ring. You just see Eddie's mom collapse, the arena goes quiet, Eddie is tripping, JBL runs away, they bring a stretcher out, and you're just there watching like, what kind of cracked out storyline is this? And that's how they open SmackDown. They show the footage in its entirety, 10 minutes of it, and then it's like, hey, welcome to SmackDown, enjoy the show. Hey, look at this nigga. How do you even think of this? So JBL and Eddie have that title match, right? One of the craziest oh, matches man. in the history of wrestling. And to follow it up on SmackDown, they had Eddie pass out in the middle of the main event because he lost too much juice at the pay-per-view. So now it looked like he was the one I having a heart this. attack. This is how the episode of the show ended. Why? Why was the company tweaking this hard? Why did they want their fans to think someone was dead? Bring it back. Bring back the tweakers, nigga. They shit kind of eat, nigga. Bring it back, nigga. That shit was hot. Dying every single week. <laughs> As the summer went on, Kurt Angle was doing his thing as the Angle Wheelchair General Manager. Eddie continued his feud oh against God. JBL. For some reason, The Undertaker was in a feud with Paul Heyman, who made the Dudleys kidnap Paul Bear. And Heyman would say, the only way I'll let Paul Bear go is if you join us, Undertaker. And this led to a match at the Great American Bash. But not a normal match, because why, why would we have that, right? This is 04 SmackDown. Nah, it was a match where by the stage, Undertaker's boy, Paul Bearer, was locked in a glass structure, which was... I'm telling you, I know exactly what happened. Let's tell you, I know I was a real wrestler, nigga, bro. I think the Undertaker won and then still put this nigga under cement. You know how the fuck I got to feel if I'm Paul Bearer? And you, you win? And then you, you bury me, nigga? I thought you was going to save me. Connected to a cement truck. Oh, ass, nigga. Because, yes... Normal people think of stuff like this. And the stipulation was if The Undertaker won and beat the Dudleys, Paul oh, Bear would be him. buried in cement on live pay-per-view and uh and die. Basically, if The Undertaker won, Paul Bear was dying. Look how Paul Bear is sitting. Or beat him, Paul. 
Look how my nigga sin. <laughs> In that big ass suit. Ah! My boy's suit was crazy. Lil Sitting is disgusting. <laughs> oh, bro, look at that nigga suit, bro. He got the little red lapel joint right here, bro. So Taker either had to oh lose on purpose God. to save his boy or win and be the reason Paul Bear dies. And what does the Undertaker funny, do? Bro. He beats the shit out of the Dudleys, and as the match goes on, the cement fills up more and more in the structure until Paul Bear is almost buried alive. And at the end, Taker wins, and it's like, oh no, Paul is dead. But Taker uses his superpowers and scares Paul Heyman away from the lever, and he goes up to the structure to, you Didn't know, save like Paul Bear, him? as we would assume. What this is his mean? boy, his amigo, his friend. He would save him, right? Psych, for some reason, the Undertaker just says, rest in peace and pulls the lever and as the man comes down into the structure burying paul bear alive oh, the great man. american bash and undertaker no <laughs> i gotta find this shit. nah i ain't gonna lie there be video but you fucking up you ain't posted your trip and as you are watching the Where's undertaker the benji what up nigga Yo, Benji, I got Roll you. Um, I got you tomorrow. Just Murder his boy, Paul for Bear, months. for no reason. Trace and that was it. That was the end of the pay-per-view, and it was never mentioned again. What up, X, I got again. Because it's fine. It's normal. It happens. It's SmackDown in 04. People are getting clapped. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Heidenreich. Now, you're probably wondering what Fucking Heidenreich. This nigga was trash. Heidenreich. Trash, nigga. Trash. Wait a minute. Something happened to Heidenreich. Didn't Heiden wouldn't Heidenreich take an ass? Didn't this nigga do something to people? Oh my god. What the hell is Heidenreich? Well, this bozo was a psychopath on the SmackDown roster who made his debut in August of 04. He would be out there attacking Michael fans, Cole. interfering in random matches, and even though Paul Heyman was his manager... And you know what's fucked up, bro? Imagine coming to a show and Heidenreich just beating your ass for no reason. Attacking fans, interfering in random matches... He's beating this nigga ass! Look how this nigga moving! He's beating his ass! In August of 04. He would be out there attacking bro. fans, interfering in random matches... Damn, he whooping his ass! Paul Heyman was his manager... He did it. Officially three big years with Trey Kishi. Yo, pre... Think for so. His own talking and his own promos in the form of poems, calling them disaster pieces. His poetry would depict how he hates the world and how he was going to destroy his opponents, among other things. And one of the wildest Neil things in SmackDown 04 was that just resubscribed for nine months. Was up traced for when can we get a barbecue stream or cooking stream? I want to see you make minute. some ribeyes and or try tip. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be it's gonna be a minute, man. Actually, uh, I got a um barbecue soon, but I don't think I'm gonna be streaming. The infamous night Hayden Wright kidnapped Michael Cole. Poor Michael Cole was just commentating Look SmackDown as he usually does, and out of nowhere, this guy, this psychopath, just grabs him and just I takes him with him to, stream. to an it. undisclosed location in the arena and did this to him. He went behind him and read him a poem, and all you hear is Michael Cole pleading for help and Hayden Wright saying, "No one knows the pain inside." Yo, and e! said, no, nah, I we think Cole the can big the the game. feel the Thank pain you inside. Always, Michael Thank Cole you, was never the Real same shit. again but wait on the exact same episode of smackdown that wasn't even the most insane thing that happened yo tell it, that I my friends was saved for the main event it was supposed over. to be just yeah, another match right it was supposed to be just another tag team match the big show was back and was teaming up with eddie guerrero against kurt angle and luther reigns and at first it was the luther most typical reigns. and most average tag luther reigns that nigga name sounds really familiar i gotta see him Well, you know, let, let me just watch it. Team main event ever, and it was perfectly fine. We had some cool spots, some interferences. It was same old, same old. And just when we thought we had seen it all on 04 SmackDown, in the main event of the fifth anniversary show, Kurt Angle, after getting knocked out of the ring in the middle of a tag team match, pulled out the strap. And I'm not talking what? about a title belt. He pulled out the burner. He pulled out the heat. He pulled out the blicky. Yeah, he and like he was about to play duck hunt, this guy was casually reloading beside the ring. He pressed circle to crouch like it was Modern Warfare 2. And after camping out for a bit, he went inside the ring and Kurt Angle on an episode of SmackDown on broadcast television on a show that was rated PG, 
quick scoped the big show in one of the most surreal things i had ever seen i will never forget being six years old watching this live and seeing kurt angles in my eyes shoot and kill the big show in the middle of the ring my bring it back holds up three pointers I don't remember last time I seen a nigga get smoked by a tranquilizer in wrestling. Bring it back. I need all that. I need all that. <laughs> Fuck that, nigga. My jaw was on the floor. All I heard was Taz yelling. He tranquilized him, Cole. He tranquilized him. I didn't know what a tranquilizer was. To me, this just looked like the same shotgun from Vice City. <laughs> I thought Big Show was dead, and then he turned into a deranged grizzly bear. Or better yet, he turned into Sandy Cheeks like that one time she was hibernating, and just like how SpongeBob and Patrick shaved Sandy, these bozos started shaving Big Show's head too. Yes, an episode of SmackDown ended with Kurt Angle and his gang getting a oh strap, shooting Big Show with a tranquilizer. <laughs> and then shaving his head and then I just laying there for dead. Yo, how? I don't I don't get it. Like, what were they smoking? What were they drinking? And I'm not saying that like it's bad. I'm just trying to understand how. It's how Big Show became bald. <laughs> how do you reach the level where this is the creative stuff you think of? How did SmackDown become a show with shootings, falling off balconies, hide and raid, kidnapping, cement burials, border patrol, fake heart attacks, twice, you know, just in case you missed the first one. You know what, as silly as it is, as stupid as it is, take me back. Please take me back. Boy, you ain't lying, take me back. Boy, this shit was hidden. I promise I might watch wrestling in a day of shit getting like these. Funny part is everything we talked about, nothing traumatized me as much as the last thing on this list. As 2004 okay. was coming to a close, my beloved John Cena, who despite the insanity around him, had a pretty chill 2004. As the year was almost over, he was set to go out and shoot his first movie, The Marine, in Australia. And this was going to require mm. him to miss around 2-3 to three weeks of television. And normally in wrestling, when someone is about to miss time to fill a movie or something, they usually have a storyline where the person gets injured and written off TV. But the thing was... That movie sucked. Yo, The Marine was ass. When I was little, I thought the hell was kind of cool. Let's be honest though, it might really be ass. I don't even watch the movies again. The Bloodline story, he, yo, I'm not gonna lie. Ricky be showing me, and also too, a, a lot of the shit I see on my Twitter, you know the Twitter for you page, it's just a, a mess of shit. I've been seeing a shit ton of that Bloodline shit. So when any, any, whenever some major shit happens, it come on my timeline and I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll be like, yo, you know what? I can see why people fucking with this. That Bloodline shit looks tough. It looks tough. It looked tough. But, um, yeah, uh, I don't remember what happened in this movie. I think if I go back and watch the movie, it might be fucking trash. It might be trash. This was John Cena. This was Mr. Cool Guy, Rapper <laughs> Guy, Thug Life, Word Life. He can't just get injured. Nah, they had a much more creative idea what for game him. He had a green so they had Carlito beat John that? Cena in his debut and win the US title, and the episode of SmackDown ended with Cena laid out and destroyed, and Carlito even snatched his chain, which would usually be enough to write someone off for a week or two, but nah, not in this case. Because the next episode of SmackDown begins with Teddy Long in front of the SmackDown roster announcing that John Cena was stabbed in his kidney at an after hours club last weekend. The whole roster is there like, oh my god, no, and they had Teddy Long say, it's very serious, I don't know what's happening, playa, the doctors are fighting hard, but you know what guys, the show must go on. I don't think you guys understand how traumatized. Where is it? I need to, I need to find a clip of Teddy Long telling me that it was crucial. <laughs> Fuck, I can't find it. Advertising this was, I was six years old and I turned on SmackDown all excited just to hear that my favorite wrestler had been stabbed. Why, why, what was the need? I was six years old and I thought my favorite wrestler was going to die. Why, why would you do that? Why would you go to those Look extreme- Look at Trey back there. Nigga, are you calling me D-Bun Dudley? Nigga, I know you ain't calling me D-Bun Dudley. My favorite wrestler was going to die. Why? Why would you do that? Why would and you why go to those extreme lanes? I, I can't. I, I'm done. As you can see, 2004 SmackDown was insane. 
Now I know, the entire era was pretty insane, Raw was doing some pretty wild things, but there is just something about 04 Smackdown just being this nuts that just sticks with me. You gotta remember, Smackdown was a highly censored show back in the day. Yep. This wasn't on a cable network, this was on broadcast TV. And remember, even though Raw and pay-per-views were TV 14 back then, Smackdown was PG most of the time, but that didn't stop them. 04 Smackdown, what, what a trip. It might not be the best television. Didn't Vince, Vince die? Yes, he did. I swear to God, nigga. We went to the, yo, yo, after, after Vince McMahon had his car fucking blew up. Nigga, they had a shirt that was saying, had, had a uh, shirt that was saying RIP Vince. And nigga, we went to the pay-per-view after he died. Swear to God, nigga, bro. Bro, we scored all them pay-per-views, nigga. We went there, nigga. They was selling RIP Vince shirts. And my brother was like, bro, why they selling that shirt? That's not cool, bro. <laughs> We thought that nigga was dead on God. <laughs> and we didn't have internet. I'm pretty sure at the time, nigga, the internet was probably like, yo, this is the storyline. This is going to happen. I think that's the beauty in not having internet. Because nowadays, nigga, so much shit with wrestling, bro, people will spoil who the fuck's coming back, all this, all that. I didn't have that. I didn't have none of that. I was just watching shit. I didn't find out nothing until Friday and Monday. Or for me, Friday and Saturday, because I didn't have cable, I had to watch wrestling on Telemundo, I had to watch Raw on Telemundo on Saturday. Nigga, that's when we found out about shit. Benoit fucked all that up? How? What do you mean he, how, wait, like, I know Benoit did some crazy shit. Like, I told y'all the story, I swear to God, I was at the pay-per-view where Benoit was supposed to be fighting. Um, They played, I will always remember this shit. They played his intro music two times. And I think John Morrison came out next. I was so excited to watch Chris Benoit, nigga, because I was like, yo, I fuck with him. I was a fan. Um, yeah, nigga. Uh, he made in the storyline. Well, I, I, how do you fuck the storyline up? What pay-per-view was that? I do not know. Um, it was in Houston though. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. So, yo, somebody else gonna have to look it up. Cause it's gonna be a lot for me to Google. But I swear to God, nigga, they had a show where he was supposed to fight twice. His, they played that nigga music two times. Vengeance 2006. Let's look it up. Vengeance 2006. What the fuck? Hell no. I ain't no fucking Vengeance 2006. That shit was in Charlotte. That can't be it. I don't think that was it. Night of Champions. 07. Oh, 07. Let's see. 2007. In Houston. There you go. I think it was this. I think it was this. Look at Bobby Lashley ass. I think it was this. 2007 in Houston, bro. And let me look up. Let me look up the cards. Uh, Chris in Wall. The match that almost happened. CM Punk versus Chris Benoit. Oh, he's going against Chris Benoit. Let me see. A CM Punk. 2007. Vengeance. Who the fuck ended up coming out? Johnny Nitro. I swear to God, nigga. Vengeance. The Knight of Champions. Nigga, what? I will never forget this shit. Introducing CM Punk's opponent, the man who will be replacing Chris Benoit, Johnny Nitro. I'm like, what the fuck is you talking about? Well, fans, this past week on ECW, both CM Punk and Chris Benoit won qualifying matches and uh, was supposed to face one another here for the ECW world title, but because of personal reasons, Chris Benoit is not here tonight at Vengeance Night I of Champions. I will never forget this shit, nigga, 100%. It is to be a champion, to your point. And if nigga you said we want Benoit be all that. ECW, all that. Down raw, you need to get and all the RP that nigga out. shit, yeah, now nah, they got that. Y'all, y'all, y'all niggas got that. That nigga, that nigga tweaked the fuck out.
But yeah, nigga, I swear to God, bro, it's no lies to this shit, nigga. And I think I was like, if I had to guess, I'm like somewhere back here, nigga. Super young on uh, watching this shit, bro. Super young. All right. But anywho, boom. Yo, this is a banger fucking video. I'm glad I put this in my record. This is the last couple seconds. There were a lot of bad matches. The roster was very thin. There were so many stupid feuds to fill up two hours of TV. But of course, I look back at this fondly. This was my first introduction into wrestling. And what an intro it was. Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, it definitely did. What a time I never it said was it did, to be Eli. alive. In the comments Never down below, let me know what is your favorite memory of O4 SmackDown. And second, what do you think is the most insane thing they did in O4?